So I just got done watching this TED talk about uh, <clears throat> about loneliness, and it. Hold on. Yeah, and it was the TED talk is about is about loneliness. And she talked about how loneliness isn't just about, you know, being sad and you not being happy, but it's about you constantly being in a fight or flight state. When you my fight or flight state is that there's two states to the human body. There's fight or flight when you're tense and you're ready for something to happen. You know, back you know, back on the fucking we're hunting and gathering, you know, when you were fight or flight, when, you know, you had to hunt or you had to fight another warrior or something, so you were in fight or flight, so your body was tense. And then there's the other side of it called the parasympathetic side, called the rest and digest mode, where where your body's at rest and it's it's digesting and it's repairing, you know, damaged muscles and, uh, you know, just di any part of you that's damaged, just repairing it, your mind, your body, all that. And what this fight or flight mode does is that it increases your heart rate. So if you're in it more, if you're in it at like during just any time, so basically when you're alone or you're depressed or sad, you're in this fight or flight mode, even if you're just sitting there fucking sad in your fucking head and you're just, you're, you're sitting there sad, but your heart's, your heart rate is increased. You're, you're in fight or flight mode, but nothing's happening. So as you can expect, this is terrible. Like the, the, it's only, you're, you're hurting yourself. It, it's a, it's the ultimate form of self harm, but we don't know. No one talks about it. So when I was in school, uh, I experienced a, a, a deep depression. Looking back at it, it's hard to talk about, but yeah, deep depression. And I was sitting in my room, you know, avoiding people, you know, just being alone. I, I, I sought space where I could just be by myself. I thought it was good. I thought maybe I just needed time away, but really it wasn't, you know, because during those times it was bad thoughts. It was evil thoughts, suicidal thoughts, thoughts, you know, I was just thinking things I didn't want to think. I was sad. I just felt so alone and I felt like I didn't have anyone to talk to. And during this time, oh, what was happening, man? I, my vision was blurry. My, my ears were ringing. My heart rate was increased. I was having anxiety attacks. I was Oh shit, man! I, a lot was going on. What else? Oh, I couldn't. My blood flow on one side of my body was fucked up. Uh, like one part, one one part, one part f uh, of my body. Like so, so the right side of my body felt weaker than my left side because this side was getting more blood flow than this side. And I guess because it was this side it was so tense and this side wasn't, and my body was fucked up. I actually ended up in the hospital because I thought I had a I thought I had a brain tumor because I was you know I was online I was researching stuff and it was all symptoms of a brain tumor I was scared man I was I was so fucking scared like I was thought I was gonna die to be honest thought I was gonna die I didn't think I didn't think I had no more nothing left I didn't know what was going on you know I my my, my mind was blurry my vision was blurry my my I couldn't walk straight I was bumping into shit everything was fucked up like Everything was so fucked up, and I just felt like I I would never get out of that, you know. And it was all because of this fight or flight. I, my, I was so tense that it was starting to my body wasn't working properly because it's not in a rest mode. It's in it's in a tense mode. So you know, eventually it's like you know pressure burst pipes, and eventually shit was shit was bursting, you know. And I'm just glad that this didn't lead to a stroke and or a heart attack or anything because that it it happens in people that are alone. She said she said it's a I'll put the link in this video. She said it's a 32 percent increase of someone having a stroke or a heart attack when they're in fight or flight mode when they're alone and when they're depressed it, it it makes so much sense i actually thought i was gonna have a stroke because you know a stroke is when blood flow is not getting to your brain properly and you know my mind was blurry and i felt as though my blood flow was fucked my hands were cold and my feet were cold and bro i was so fucked up you know and i didn't have no one to talk to about it and if i did i didn't think i did i didn't think anyone would fucking hear what i had to say you know so, so I was in this, whole, yeah, so I was, you know, it was a time for me, man, it lasted for a while, it lasted for about six months, six to eight months, something like that, 
You know, and it was fucking me up. It was in this video, man, I was crying. I was crying so much. It was like, because I never heard anyone talk about it like this. I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only one that knew I was in fight or flight mode the whole time. I thought I was the only one that when they're alone, they were in this fight or flight mode. I thought I was the only one, but really it's everybody that's alone. And like, what I got to say is just that the reason I felt alone was just because I, I thought I didn't have no one to talk to. And just no one understood, I thought, for at least. You know, I just thought no one understood what I had to say. And I, it was just like, a, I was graduating college. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I knew I didn't want to work, but I know I wanted to impress my parents and make them proud. And But I knew I didn't want to do it, you know. And it, just, it sent me down this rabbit hole, man. And, and then college, I was going through a little ego trip type thing. And everything just fucked me up, bro. Fuck me up and like what I want to say is just basically man being alone it's an issue it, it's a it's an extreme issue it, it's serious it's not like it like I said it's not like oh she's just a sad no it's like it actually can kill you it can really kill you like there are so many examples I can bring up there she has a couple in the video that are really sad you know but loneliness kills man it's not just it's not just like oh i'm sad no it, it, bro you could fucking die from the shit i thought i was going to die it was just loneliness it, it was literally just loneliness that, that was killing me i just felt so alone you know and i think what, what, what was bad about mine is that i had so many people around me but no one really you know to understand me in and so it was even worse. It was even more extreme loneliness because it, I had people around me. It wasn't like I didn't. It was just they were around me, but they didn't get me. So it was almost like I wasn't there, you know? And just I'm just saying, man, I made this video because this shit is serious, man. It's serious. And and another thing is like what I got from this, why I say depression was the best thing that's ever happened to me because it's taught me that I can die. It, it Death has given me motivation because it showed me that, yo, you're not invincible. You can die anytime. So start living life as though you can die. We only have this moment. We only have precious moments, moment by moment, by moment. The future don't exist. The past doesn't exist. It's just our moments we have. But now I know. I'm telling you all this. You're not gonna. You're not gonna live it. You're not because you don't know how the feeling of death feels. And until you do. Until you do, you're gonna, you're gonna keep living this as though you're gonna live forever, you know. Because if you knew you were gonna die, you would live totally differently. And that's a whole another video. I can go on for days about how you would live if you knew you were gonna die. You would just do what you love to do every single day, and you wouldn't compromise because you're gonna die. You see what I'm saying? And it like frustrates me to think that people don't know this, you know. But I just pray that you can experience a near death experience. I, I pray that you do, really, whether it's depression, anything, because it's a pattern in people that have been depressed or experienced a near-death experience. They all have a lust for living. My man, my, my, my best friend, Victor, he, same thing happened to him. Same thing, bro. And look at, look at the kid. His fucking Instagram handle is Victor Has Life, you know, and he's the happiest kid because he almost died, literally. Literally, man, I could go on. That's a whole nother, That's another video I could go on about Vic. You know what I mean? It fucked me up. That's my best friend, bro. My best friend. I, I bro, that shit was scary, bro. And maybe, maybe it, this it didn't lead to my depression, but I was sad because of that shit. But I had no one to talk about. I had I had no one to talk to about it. My best friend, I thought was wasn't gonna be here no more. It fucked me up, bro. And I, you know, shit hard to talk about. But I just know that a lot of people need to hear this. And maybe I'm the vessel to do it. Maybe I'm the one that's supposed to, you know, spread this. Because, you know, you're alone, but just know you're not alone. Just know you have to reach out. And what I mean by this is that you have to reach out. Listen, because lonely, it can kill you. It's not, it's serious. It's, it won't go away until you, until you release it. Release your demons. Just talk to somebody. Talk to your best friend. If you don't have a best friend, write it down. Talk to somebody, please. Talk to me. Talk to me, talk to a stranger, talk